This is Sumit, who's been following us for two years. He caught the uh, Alibaba bug, I guess, uh, sometime uh, mid last year, and he's been posting great stuff ever since. Uh, this is the, um, uh, and you may remember Sumit, by the way, from uh, many of his uh, questions during periods of concern with Alibaba, was very, very worried, and uh, he learned to stick it through, and now he's making coins. So, congratulations on that. Um, and he posted this, East China's Zhejiang province will support high quality development of platform economy, make targeted supportive policy and establish professional service mechanisms, said provincial governor Wang Hao in his government work report. Xi Zhang will encourage platform companies to step up research and applications of frontier technologies and support the companies to lead development, create jobs and compete. Uh, also, Morgan uh, Sumit put out Morgan Stanley's quant strategy showed U.S. based money managers have yet to add to their China equity positions, even after Xi Jinping's pivots. What will happen to Chinese equities when U.S. Uh, money managers start adding to their China equity positions? You can see just how underweight the U.S. managers are relative to the uh, non U.S. managers as it relates to ex U.S. Uh, and emerging markets dramatically underweight, which is effectively China. So this is good data from Morgan Stanley via Sumit. Then he put out a thing on uh, Ant Group, just to put this in context, because I know I've been talking about it, but we haven't spent a lot of time because the IPO is probably a year plus off and there's zero credit for it in the stock at present. Um, they process 17 trillion yuan via Ali, Alipay versus uh, Am Visa plus MasterCard plus American Express processed 14.6 trillion in the same period in 2020. So uh, it just goes to show the difference in China that Alipay, i.e. Ant Financial, which you own a third of as a shareholder of Alibaba, is bigger than all three combined by almost, you know, 18, 17, 18% round numbers. Uh, they issued 290 billion in uh, US, oh, wait a second. This is in dollars, $17 trillion processed in, via Alipay versus Visa, MasterCard, and American Express did $14.6 trillion in 2020. I thought that was in yuan. That's that's huge. Um, also, they issued $290 billion, a third of a trillion in consumer loans in 2021, biggest money market fund with $173 billion AUM and $107 million healthcare plan customers. This is big. Uh, so that's the asset management with the 173 building, the lending, the uh, 17 trillion of payments, and the 107 million people in Ant's mutual aid healthcare plan. So there's a lot to this business. It's only going to grow bigger. The big get bigger, and this you can see in the um, payments volume. Visa, Mastercard, American Express, and how they compete. So uh, so great data. Uh, relayed by Sumit and then he also talked about Morgan Stanley if you remember Morgan Stanley was the one with the underweight the uh, uninvestable in the hole now Morgan Stanley's lifted China to overweight from an equal weight position at it and uh, we're at the by the way they said they had an equal weight since January 2021 that's BS in February 2020 wait February 2022, they said uninvestable, and and uh, so and then they changed back or something like when it bounced or whatever. But it's just emotions. Uh, we quote: We are at the beginning of a multi-quarter recovery in earnings revisions and valuations. MS suggests further increasing exposure to reopening beneficiaries such as consumer names like Baba and Pin Duo Duo. Uh, the brokerage lifted China to overweight from equal weight. It raised its 2023 targets. Uh, multi-quarter recovery, consumer names, blah, blah, blah. So you get the story. Opinion follows trend. We've talked about this the whole time. Uh, tw top 20 China, Hong Kong holdings among long only emerging market active managers as of 12-31-2022. Uh, so just a couple weeks ago. Underweight fund managers find themselves chasing this rally in Chinese equities. They were the most underweight, 10 cent, followed by Alibaba. So now they've got to chase and choke on as much stock as uh, as they can. And um, and that's that. I, unfortunately, we don't have any to give them. We'll 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 talk to them in a, in a couple hundred points. But for now, uh, let them choke on someone else's stock. And God bless. They missed the first hundred percent, but uh, they can ride the next 200 points. Next, um, this is from China Investors. Uh, reread the Ant Group IPO prospectus from October 2020, 
when they were going to go public. They're now going to go public again because um, Jack Ma ceded voting control. So then there's usually a year delay, but the key is the game is on. They were able to go out and raise money in, in public markets uh, to expand and double their capital base, which is pretty exciting. Um, One billion users, by the way, on um, Alipay app. Uh, that's part of Ant Financial. One billion with a B. Um, 711 million monthly active users, 2,000 financial partner financial institutions, um, 118 trillion RMB digital payments in mainland China, 4 trillion uh, investment tech AUM, 80 million Alipay app monthly active merchants, 80 million merchants. That's mind boggling. <laughs> it's almost a third. It would be like a third of Americans having a business and being on the same, uh, you know, PayPal or something like that. Like vir vir virtually zero competition. It's, it's mind boggling. 200 countries and regions with online payment services, uh, 729 million on the Alipay app, uh, consumer credit. What? and uh, the healthcare thing that they were talking about. Then they show the growth of the business. They've been around since 2004, so this is not a startup. This is the hegemon in the payments business in the region. Uh, it shows how they've simplified the ownership structure. Uh, this is the Alipay app. You can see here, you can do more than just pay your stuff. You can um, movies, hotel, credit card payments, uh, sports, transfer funds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the story. Moving right along, uh, we covered that. Jack Ma gave control, so now they can go public. There's a delay. But remember, they put the uh, uh, head of uh, former head of the Hong Kong Exchange on the board of Ant a few months ago, and we said that was the tell. Well, now we know why. China reopens to the world as international travel restrictions end. Uh, Alibaba's grocery chain, Fresh Shippo, which we've talked about, records first profitability in key segment, eyes expansion in 2023. They've got about 300 units. They do charge a membership fee. That's an important flywheel in business models that we look at. Another hint, by the way, uh, where the uh, retailer, whether in this case it's uh, a stores or online like Amazon Prime, like Costco, they basically get big enough where they can offer the lowest prices. They cut out the margins so they knock out all small competition. And then what they do is they charge a membership fee for that right to buy goods at the lowest cost. And that membership fee goes straight to the bottom line. And that retains their moat because once someone buys the membership fee and they know they're getting the lowest prices, they continue to shop there and they don't even look anywhere else or clip coupons or whatever. Else. China stock traders bet consumption will supercharge the 2023 rally. Uh, this is what we said all uh, for months, and now it's playing out. So you can see it here. Uh, consumption is sure to surge going forward at the forefront of a COVID recovery boost helped by price hikes. Uh, and stifled demand comes roaring back while confidence and employment pick up. Yada, yada, yada. We know this. We knew it was coming. You guys were ahead of the game uh, many months before. China trading activity picks up as COVID wave eases, and uh, and it's just off to the races. So moving right along, Hong Kong is going to be the top property investment destination in 2023. I mean, what a difference a week makes, right? I mean, like three weeks ago, everyone was getting the hell out of Hong Kong. Now everyone's coming back. Uh, Hong Kong stocks log best start to a year since 1999 as Alibaba, Tencent, uh, long for fuel gains. So best start to a year since 1999. Uh, guys, just jog your memory. Remember I put out that chart, Hong Kong price to book. Whenever it gets below one, these good things happen. Well, sure enough, a few months later, here we are. Boom, it happens. History doesn't rhyme, but it, excuse me, it doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme over and over and over. And you just have to be patient, have the stomach, know what you own, and the rewards come. China may ease the three red lines property rules and big shifts. So just more and more of this stuff. Asia stocks enter bull market as China rally extends. Could you imagine this headline just two months ago? I mean, remember I was on, I covered last week, I was on CNBC Asia and Will was laughing. He's like, you still buying Baba laughing? And I was like, yeah, we love it more than ever. And uh, sure enough, here we are. So I can't wait to go back on that. Uh, my guess is Will is a smart guy. He probably bought some with me. 
and uh, is making some coins. So Alibaba leads China tech gains as regulatory woes ease further. Uh, so that was that. Alibaba stock is new top pick at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, guys. Literally, like four weeks ago, people were laughing at Alibaba. Now it's the top pick at Goldman Sachs at Morgan Stanley. So there you go. Chinese stocks have been on a tear. Morgan Stanley says it's turning even more bullish on China, slowly but surely. Wait till it's at 200. They'll really, they'll really get bullish. And when it's at 300, they'll be hardly able to contain themselves. And there'll be other people who you know were extremely negative in the hole that all of a sudden, all their noise about VIE structure and delisting and communism and all this stuff, which has been the same stuff for the last 20 years, uh, is going to go out the window and at 300 bucks they will be jumping up and down cheering by the breakout by the breakout and we will be laying off stock like it's nobody's business and starting to look at opportunities in India. Uh, Ant Group won't be squashed after all. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Shanghai targets 5.5% consumption led GDP growth for 2023 as it looks to recover ground loss to COVID lockdown. So they're shifting gears. Historically they did infrastructure. Now they want consumption they want to be self-contained and who's the toll taker alibaba china jet fuel demand set to soar ahead of lunar new year uh, uh while us m2 money supply is collapsing you can see it year on year china m2 money supply has been growing at double digits for over a half a year now that they finally reopened the economy and let people out of captivity the effect of this easy policy will start to be seen in the economic and company data in coming months on a lagged basis. That's the earnings recovery that they're talking about, consumption-led growth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where do you want to place the bulk of your bets? In the U.S., where money supply is contracting, or in China, where it's expanding and the game is back on? Uh, you know our answer on that. And then in the U.S., we're in very discrete special situations uh, that are non-correlated. So, 